out some some fall care here so winter preparation for your bees so it's been uh, I've had some problems with the work truck and it's been a little while but uh, August uh, the third week of August or so we usually rob and then I keep the queen excluders on then I usually come back a week later and turn them over uh, that was done but then you need to get back within another three days or so and pull those off that hasn't been done because I had problems with my truck like I said so uh, I guess today I just want to show you what I do for winter winter preparation and why and uh, you can see that I have a bucket here because you're gonna have to be scraping off some top bars and I have some Terra Pro teramycin treatment for American foul brood and European foul brood so uh, the gist of it is and then I'll go through it is you clean off the inner cover you clean off the top bars you pull off that queen excluder if need be um, and when I say that I mean if you haven't already done it uh, and then uh, the teramycin is a, a treatment for American foul brood and European foul brood it's uh, it's really built to be prophylactic it's not supposed to be it, it, it wasn't really built to be once you find foul brood in your hives then you start treating that re really hardly ever does anything uh, it has to be in the food supply the current food supply that they're using in order to stop killing the larva so uh, it's really meant to be a prophylactic treatment now in some states uh, that may not be a possibility it may be illegal for you to treat with teramycin prophylactically but uh, uh, where I'm at there's there's no actual law stating that it used to be common practice and because bees are building up, or I should say foul brood, the bacteria is building up a resistance to it. Um, they, it's, it's discouraged now. So, uh, however, I went a number of years without treating for it. And every year, the next spring, I had problems with hives getting foul brood-like symptoms. And in one case, European foul brood. I started prophylactically treating again and, I, and it hasn't been a problem. So I guess what it's likened to for me is like MRSA, you know, a staph infection that is resistant to methicillin. And, uh, you know, what it, it became that way because doctors were over treating with certain antibiotics, methicillin in this case, and uh, that strain of staph became. Uh, resistant to it, but what do they do? They develop other antibiotics for it, and that's what they're doing in the case of American foul brood and European foul brood as well. So, the problem I see is that if you have hives with foul brood, you spread it to other hives that don't, both in your yard and someone else's yard. So, I typically in the fall I treat with teramycin three treatments. The stuff that I got back there is Terra Pro, and uh, you can buy that, you know, from any any beak supplier and and basically it's pre-mixed you just you just give it to the bees in a way that I'll show you here in a minute uh, on the other hand you can also buy teramycin or duramycin in uh, you know from a, a local uh, from local stores Big R for example has it um, and you mix it with powdered sugar and uh, you can use that. In fact, it works better. I would I would recommend that versus uh, buying TerraPro. But in this case, you can see my inner cover is upside down, and that's to give them some room for the queen excluder. There, you can see it was all filled with honey. It's all dried up now. And then I will talk about the inner cover. So let me pull this excluder off. If you do this right. Uh, you want to pull along the wires because there it is stuck down there. You want to pull along the wires so that you don't bend any of the wires. Pull the excluder off. You don't want that on over winter. And the reason you don't is because it gives them room to do that. Okay, now what I typically do in years past and what I continue to do in the future, what I plan on doing in the future is I make a day to come out, pull off the excluders, and clean off the top bars. 
because it's a lot of work. You're doing a lot of bending over and stuff, but you want to get all the wax off the top bars. And uh, you can harvest this, by the way, melt it down into uh, wax blocks and sell that or use that in your own production. Um, if you're going to make foundation, the best is, is to use wax cappings from your extracting operation, but you can make candles with this or, or whatever you want to do. But you kind of have to, you know, unless you want to kill a bunch of bees, you kind of have to smoke and, and do this. Thing. It's a lot worse if, if there's still honey in, the, in, the, uh, in these areas, which there was at one time. And since I turned the excluder over, they cleaned all that up and put it down below. So you're gonna clean off all the top bars. And then you're gonna give them a dose of teramycin. So what you got is a, a tablespoon. Some cases I just use, I, I know it's about that much on my hive tool. And you just spread it along the top bars. And that's all you do, you do this once every three to four days and you do it three times so that's the treatment for foul brood the preventative treatment in your bucket here you're going to put wax because you don't want to start any robbing behavior from the bees so you have to have a a, a, uh, a bucket with a lid and you want to just scrape your your inner covers clean put them back on the hive with this side down. Now the idea here, having the flat side down, bees are still, it's September, the beginning of September. Uh, bees are still actively seeking nectar. There's still stuff blooming. They're still bringing in honey. They're still building comb to store that honey if need be. If you put the flat side down right now, the next time you come back, those top bars will still be clean. If you don't put the flat side down, and you turn it the way I had it to begin with to accommodate the queen excluder, what you'll end up with is comb built up in there. If your bee space is wrong between your top bar and your inner cover, flat side down, you're going to come back with either, if it's too small amount of space, it's going to be propolized on there, too big, and you're going to have honeycomb built in there. But if you stick with the same supplier as far as bee equipment goes and you test that, you won't have that problem. And then you close them up. And then the last thing you do is do a little tilt test to see how heavy they are. These guys are pretty heavy. So develop your own system, of course. But I do a brick system. If they're really light on honey, I put it back here. If they're really heavy, I put it up there. And these guys are right about there. So you want to, that way, when you come in back into the yard, you can see immediately which hives are heavy, which ones are light, which ones you might have to feed etc. So this is the first step in my winter prep. Clean off the top bars, clean off the inner cover, weigh them initially and give them their first dose of ter teramycin. Three days from now I'll come back and give the second dose of teramycin and then I will eventually treat for mites but right now it's about 90 degrees outside. You don't want to treat what I'm going to treat with when it's 90 degrees or above so we'll wait, that. We'll wait for that for another video.